It's weird to be back in life, isn't it? <laughs> the other thing that's weird is um, like you all look like bank robbers. <laughs> I mean, you know, it doesn't look 100% safe up here. <laughs> You know, I um, I taught my, or am teaching my first class back at um, at Stanford, and um, it's at the Graduate School of Business, and the first time that I they like, got in front of like live humans um, after it being virtual for 16 months, it, it, it is so rich. Like it, it, it is so, it is so profoundly different to be with real human beings than um, technology mediated experience. And, and, and the feeling that it was for me was almost the difference between like plastic fruit and real fruit. That that real fruit has like a flavor and a you can feel something deep and abiding. Um, you know, when you bite an apple or a strawberry, it's an amazing thing. And and plastic fruit may look like fruit, but it, it doesn't have any of the, the deep anything. Um, and, and, you know, so I, what, what has struck me and, and in, in our world, which is so mediated by technology, um, to not lose the depth and realness of actual interpersonal connection and communication. And, and it's not that it's, it's not that it's limited or explained by the fact that um, this 16 months has created much more anxiety and depression in people and loneliness and um, that, that, that we're all, <clears throat> excuse me, we're all out of balance at a, at a very fundamental level when we're not in relationship. That we're fundamentally off. And we know that. And we, we, we just know it. Like I, I mean, I've, I've done a number of talks for this church over the 16 months and yet walking in here and having live humans is a completely different experience. And, and the communication is different. Like I know that when I speak on um, Zoom or whatever, it uses much less of my humanness that when I, when I meet people here, I mean, I don't even have to talk to any of you, but it's a different level of communication. There's a different exchange of energy. E even the bank robber piece is an exchange of energy, of fear, uh, uh, unusualness. Like, you, know, you all look like you're being held hostage. Um, but that's, that's a deep communication that is received in every inch of my being. And, and, and I, I, I really believe for all of us, it's, it's important, not just for our, not just for our emotional well-being, but I think it's really central to whatever spiritual experience we have that from, I mean, from what I can understand, I mean, that's, that's not even the right thing. We um, are 
intentions towards each other. They are a reflection of our development, character, um, connection to God, whatever. That, that our inner relationship with others, both directly and abstractly, that's us. You know, there's, um, there's a lot of reports from people who have had near-death experiences of, of various kinds. And most of you, you've heard some of that, but there's a, you know, there's a, often a white light or <clears throat> you get to often meet people from the past or, but there's also a moment there. There's a different, described in different ways by different people and different interpretations. There's like a life review. And everybody gets to see very quickly their life. And usually there's some energy source, some being of something, or even if it's more just inchoate um, observing. And it's, it's, I mean, I've never had this experience, but it, it's done in acceptance and love but the, 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 as you go through the life review, people tend to be surprised that the only things that seem to matter at all, at all, were did you learn and did you love? And everything else that's viewed is irrelevant. So, you know, I've read some humorous kind of accounts where like the guy's watching the life of you or the woman and you know he he w gets a big promotion and is like standing there telling her day how great he is and the, the guide is like yawning and then there's a moment where he's leaving the where he gets all this approval and he opens the door for somebody and the guide's like beaming And in whatever amount of cosmic time that takes, the way I have languaged it to myself is we get a we get a two question final exam. You know, did you love? Did you learn? And that's it. And every other thing that we'll have done here. It had no purpose and value. And, and, and I believe that that is what the spiritual essence is. Like to take our life experiences and, you know, either become more generative, gracious, kind, or learn, you know, grow, understand, um, become wiser and and the 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 people like the the real connection with people um, is essential for both we we don't learn alone and we certainly don't love alone but we don't learn alone either because um, you know the books, they were written by somebody else. You know, everything we have was written or created or developed for us by somebody else, by other people. And our brief time here you know, will we'll, we'll be replaced by other people. And, and, and so the, whatever learning there is, is some kind of stream that we jump into for a little while. And, and, and you can't do that from other people. And 
the, the communication that we get from other people is, if we let it, is so profound for our learning. Like there's that wonderful, um, I don't know, I guess it's a quote where and the guy says, I, 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 you're, you're, who you are is screaming so loud that I can't hear a word you're saying. Like, you know, we're who we are. And, and we teach each other who we are. But other people are our best chance of getting feedback on who we are. Like Fred, you're a pain in the butt. You know, if you get that from 12 different people, you can assume you're a pain in the butt. It doesn't matter how much denial you do and how much intellectualization or how much BS you give yourself. If, if you get feedback from enough people that you have an issue, you very, very likely have that issue. And if, if you have a primary intimate partner, then one of the, I think, main purposes of that primary intimate partner is for you to lower your defenses enough so that you'll actually learn from them who you are. Because you can't bullshit them the way we try to each other who don't see us as often. And if we have a little more of an understanding of what this life's purpose is, then sometimes we grudgingly allow them to give us feedback, honest feedback. You know, like I've watched you now for nine years, and for whatever reason, like you are X. Or I've watched you now for nine years, and it's amazing, like no matter what kind of provocation, um, you respond with kindness. But we need others to really see us. And, and it's not just with the eyes. You know, there's all this vibrational transfer. The great, the great harm of masks is that we can't be seen and we can't communicate in the same way. So people don't get feedback from and towards us because they need to read our faces to be able to recognize what we actually mean. But we have a decision at some point, like what, what, what do we think we're doing here? And I mean, my, one of the reasons that, I mean, I'm a, I'm not entirely a secular person, but I'm certainly not like religiously oriented. But one of the reasons that I have enjoyed talking at the handful of like religiously oriented places that I do over the years is that it adds a whole nother dimension to, to what our purpose is that I might say it's really important to develop compassion or kindness and might come up with a psychological or a medical reason. But it's also, I think, necessary to have a deeper reason or a corresponding reason of growth, love, and spirit that we are multidimensional beings. And, and I do believe, as I know I've said it at multiple churches, it, I think it's important to get together like this once a week and to like listen to the, not just the words, but there's an energy in a church and that energy teaches us at a different level of our humanity. 
and and we require that energy to be our our full self but it's it's to be unfolded with humans you know the great the great i don't know what the word is not challenge but of zoom is is not just the technology mediates between us which it does and and there are advantages to it i mean i've done talks now you know to australia and brazil and all sorts of places and i'm really delighted not to fly there but we're the problem on zoom not just zoom like we multitask, we don't pay attention, we're busy, we're not centered, we're indifferent to what's being discussed. So we create energy blocks from the transmission. You know, you can go on a, a Zoom thing with 50 people in the, in the audience and only 10 of them will be actually paying attention. And, and those 10, um, they're, everybody's influenced by each other, whether you know it or not. And, and one of the reasons this is like better ground, so to speak, is we're not on our cell phones here. And there's whatever number of years of people sitting in here having a certain reverence. And, and we tend to pay attention, those of us who choose to show up here. Those are individual decisions of, of a kind of shared purpose. But my concern is that technology will, will by its ubiquitousness, make us forget all that. That there are more subtle connections among and between people where we influence each other, influence each other, and we can learn from each other. So I have seen, and I, you know, it's just interesting. Like you can't stare at a Zoom screen endlessly; it'll drive you crazy, because the transmission is a little off, and we're not used to staring at people like that. But if if I calm down and center myself and I, I watch something with live, not but live at that time, but, you know, not in the room, then you, you do cultivate some connection. But it's, it's the connection that matters. That, that, that's, that's, the, that's the principle. It's the connection. You know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop in a moment, but I, I was reading... Um, Stephen Covey's book, um, The Seven Essential Habits of like, you know, Healthy Humans. And, and he talks about the human evolutionary growth from dependence, which is, you know, I depend on you to give to me, to independence, where I, I depend on myself like I am a... a a functioning, like autonomous, but giving unit to interdependence, where we mutually are humble enough to depend on each other. That you start with dependence, which is weakness. You go to a kind of strength, which is independence. And then the fullest strength is interdependence, us together. And that happens often in, you know, intimate relationships as well. You know, you start with an intimate relationship to get what you need. You know, I need somebody to give me this. And then on an ideal situation, then some of that need is filled and you become more independent. But the deepest, most positive 
intimate partnerships are interdependent, which is, yeah, we're, we know we're separate people, but after all these years of deep friendship, we can choose to rely on each other. But it's, it's, it's reciprocal, you know, it's, it's, it's in flow like that all the time. And, and that, that something is what I see are technologically mediated experiences making harder for all of us. You know, the, 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 my girlfriend sent me a picture of her children and their dog saying goodbye, no, joining their dad at an airport and they were going off on vacation and the two girls were like staring at their phones side by side. They weren't talking to each other or even noticing each other. So you had two children and a dog and the dog was the only one paying attention. Like it was hilarious, you know what I mean? Like you had one kid like this, one kid like this, and then the dog like just and eagerly shining at the camera going, hi, I'm here. And yet the two kids were like <laughs> lost. And, and you know, I, 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 I think we're meant to um, figure out um, like how to, I'm gonna say tritely care for each other but it's a, it's a, it's a deeper vibration too to be like open to energy, both to give and to take. Anyway, I thank you as always for inviting me to your church, um, and it, it it really is nicer to see humans. So thank you. <laughs>